call this meeting to order. This is a special call workshop meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Hood County, Texas. Today is Monday, May 24th, 2021. It's 9 a.m. and we're in the Emergency Operations Center at 401 Deputy Larry Miller Drive in Granbury. And we're going to discuss the budget request for fire protection for the 2021-22 budget year. No action will be taken at this workshop as it will be an informational workshop only. Okay, Jeff Young, Fire Marshal, kick it off. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Glad y'all could make it. <clears throat> well, this was actually me that asked Jeff to put this thing oh, together, okay. so I guess we'll, we'll, I'll step off into it. Um, <clears throat> we all, <clears throat> excuse me, we got the uh, the list last time we were here, uh, what all the chiefs put together, came up with. And my, my idea, what I wanted to propose on this idea was coming up, putting that together as a bond. To, we would need to set, set out some, the chiefs, look, this is the deal. We kick it back to the chiefs and go, hey, you guys are going to have to sell this to the uh, to the community because it's going to be on a ballot and it'll have to have voter support on this deal. So we need you to kind of go in there and, and narrow this down and come up with some ideas and, and give us a bond that'll pass. Um, I think that right now some of the stuff we've got is pretty... Some of those numbers are pretty big uh, for, the, for the stations and stuff. I think that some of that construction costs are, are, are pretty pretty inflated. I've done a little research on that myself. I think that we build a 60 by 100 four base station um, for, for around $350,000. I think we were looking at 800 on this. So we would need to get some stuff narrowed down and get get some ideas that would uh, that would pass pass the voters um i like the idea of getting taxpayer approval on that spending that kind of money and i think that there i think there's an appetite for that i think it takes care of the whole the whole county it doesn't leave anybody out we all uh you know the, the, the work you guys did putting together the tanker the tanker bid and those kind of things, that's good work. There's a lot of stuff that we need to do to get caught up, and I think that the bond package gets us caught up, caught up pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things that, uh, well, and, and I think this needs to be emergency services. I think we need to look at, look at everything, not just fire. And I think EMS is a big part of that. I've talked to Ricky quite a bit and uh, you know to have a to have an EMS station south of the lake on 144 something over in the Day Cordova area Fall Creek Highway over there in that area somewhere and then on the the northwest loop side Garcia is somewhere around there if you'll look at the call volume here you can see that uh, the places that get hammered are Indian Harbor, Day Cordova, uh, Station 20, Station 70, and uh, of course Grand Bay. So to get places strategically located to get EMS faster to the patient, to definitive care, that's, that's the point of what we're doing here is to get our patients to definitive care faster. That's a better result for everybody. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm working with Ricky to, uh, we all are, to try to get a, uh, a contract, some sort of contract. Um, he's, just, he's just asking for exclusive rights to service the county for EMS. And he doesn't have that right now. So it's difficult for him to put out any kind of capital uh, building projects or anything like that. Not knowing if tomorrow, Carefly, Amon, or anybody else can come in here, you know, take half his business. So, um, 
something that I would like to see as part of this bond is let's build those stations as part of this bond for EMS and then those are owned by the county. So whatever EMS provider does come in in the future, those buildings are still there. Anyone can operate out of them because those are always going to be population centers. That's never going to be a, a change in anything there. Um, I know that Indian Harbor's got a station need <coughs> right this minute. And they're talking. They're talking with Indian Harbor. They've got some land secured to uh, build that station there at the front gate. You got a you, Indian Harbor's got a huge covered area all the way to the southern edge of the county and uh, down to Somerville County. Even into Somerville County is part of <laughs> part of how that's drawn on the map. And uh, right now they're way down inside, way down inside the harbor. And a little take some time to get out of there. Um, we discussed that that would also be helpful for recruitment to be a little bit more visible. There are people that live outside the harbor that are in that area that don't know uh, that that VFD exists, that they can volunteer on it. So I feel that that would help them with the, with the recruitment angle and it would better serve, it would better serve the community down there. Um, some of my notes. Um, Daycord Cordova, you guys have talked about, and, and obviously you've got a problem getting to the west side of Daycord Cordova. That, uh, you talked about building a substation over there on that side. That's something that's, you know, uh, it's, it serves the constituents better to have this, to have this thing over there. Um, but, but really what I think we need is for, I think it's a great way to get. I think it checks all the boxes. It's, it's voter approved. We get, we get the needs met. The chiefs are coming and telling us what you guys need, not us trying to tell you what you need. But you also, you're constrained in what you want to put on this <coughs> bond package because you still have to get the voter approval. You still have to to get that past the voters. And it uh, it covers every department in the county. It helps everybody. Yes, sir? So, uh, I like the fact that we're addressing some capital purchase needs throughout the entire county. Uh, my only question is, we're going to go back to the bond issue in five to ten years when the funding would need to be increased again? No, and I think that that's something that we absolutely have to do as part of this conversation. Um, I think that the, the tanker or the engine refurbs, if, if we're going to continue along that route, they need to be rolled into this bond and free up that, free up that money to be able to do uh, and, and increase the subsidies. I think that there's, you know. So is there any plan to secure some long-term funding for all of us? You mean like the subsidy increase? Just in general. Yeah, I mean that's, I don't, it's it's on the table. This is something, we've got to look at the elephant in the, in the room. There's a lot of those and we have to get this figured out. We need to come up with, you know, I have heard uh, a retirement package as retention. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how that works. I don't know if that is actually a viable tool to help retention, to help recruitment. See, that's is that viable for y'all at Greenbridge? Do what? Is y'all's retirement? Um, and I spoke in the uh, chief's meeting about that. It seems to appeal to the more middle aged, um, the younger 20 year olds. It doesn't seem to move the needle at all for them. Uh, they just don't even. It's probably understandable. You're not thinking about retirement. You know, yeah, 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 and that's, you know. And, and for us, the 20 year olds, is what we got coming in the door. We don't we don't have the 35 and 40 year old volunteer anymore. So yeah, just curious about a bond. Does that raise taxes for the length of the bond, or does it raise it for the entirety? I don't understand how bond works. Someone enlighten me. You you come up with a dollar figure. Uh, you figure out the time that that bond will. 
it's, it's almost like a mortgage. Okay. So, you know, if you have a 15 year note, you're borrowing this much money, you pay it off in this much time. So it would be a, you know, it, it goes to the, it is a tax increase. You go to the voter and you ask them to pay this much tax for this length of time. That's, that's another thing about the bond is it's, it's finite. There's a set term for how long this will last. Sure. And a lot of that depends on how much the bond is. If so, we can, you know. So if we if we pass a bond for, say it's for five years. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing numbers out. I have no sure. idea. Sure. And it's an, a twenty million dollar bond. At the end of that five years, when we still haven't figured out what we're going to do after that, we have to go back to the citizens and ask for another bond. I mean, is that is that fiscally or financially responsible? <clears throat> asking them to raise taxes and raise taxes and raise taxes five years, ten years, fifty. I, I don't know. That uh, part of this deal is yes, we do have to take care of the day-to-day -day needs. We've got to take care of the yearly, the yearly needs, and that's that was presented as part of this package too. And uh, so yes, that's that is part of this deal. I would like to see you know, and all this stuff. Like I said, I'm throwing everything out here on the table. What are the answers? Where where do we go? From the, uh, everybody has turned in uh, the budget, what their department needs, year to year financially. And uh, that's something that we we need to figure out, we need to look at. I, I would like to say, okay, let's give everybody an across the board. I think there's a baseline what everybody needs to operate. Lipan doesn't need the same as De Cordova. And I don't, I, I don't necessarily, and, and like I said, this is something that we need to sit down and, and discuss and work through. I don't think that writing everybody a check for $125,000 a year is the right answer. Like I said, I don't know as though LiPan, LiPan doesn't have the same needs as De Cordova does. And the taxpayer's got to pay for this. That's, all of this is putting a burden on the taxpayer and we have to be conscious of that. And, uh, so I can tell you my discussions that I've had with Becky, my understanding is the, the subsidies and all that stuff, the, the normal operating budget stuff is something that's budgetable. Yes. But because we threw in $8.6 million for, re, for uh, remodels and buildings and all of that, and nine pumper tankers, and that's why we're having to go to the bond. Well, I think we, I mean, it's my opinion, we should have done a little bit better job spacing out $8.5 million over years instead of one year. We, well, we, so worked, we worked together when we did the county tanker refurb to space it out over however many years so to lessen the impact and then to come back and say, you know, we need eight and a half million dollars at once. No, we don't. So, so look at this more as a quick catch up. Program. Sure. So we sure. asked for the bond. And the, so the bond is just like the, the bond package they had to do for the, the Crescent Bypass. Right. Okay. I think we went and asked the voters for $35 million. But it doesn't necessarily mean we have to borrow that amount of money. Right. We're just getting the approval. It's like going and getting a pre-approval for buying a house. Okay, no, we go, I, we go I to the voters, it. we tell them, hey, this is our project. We want to we want to bond for $20 million. <clears throat> that doesn't mean we have to go borrow $20 million. That just means we have the ability to do so. So I think you said something that I agree with. It is a quick catch-up, but it still doesn't address long-term issues. And I, that, that's my concern about going back to the bonds, the back to the bonds is, Every five or ten years, we're going back. Hey, we need more money. We need more money. We well, when we're not trying to add sixteen million on top of the budget that already exists, it probably will be a little easier to schedule out future purchases. Yes, you have it. You have an absolutely legitimate point, and I think that that absolutely needs to be part of this discussion. And that is your every year subsidy. Right. You know, eighteen thousand dollars. You know, two years ago didn't <laughs> didn't right. didn't meet that need. So you know. It is that is part of the discussion where we need to be to, to to fund these fire departments. No, you're absolutely correct. We don't need to do this every five years. You're correct. And uh, you know what the what the schedule looks like. What needs to be what needs to be bought and put in service tomorrow. I, I know Toler needs a tanker right now. That's a that's a big big need for Toler right this minute. Um, you know. Other, other be, departments may be able to wait a little bit. I think that would be more helpful, Commissioner, is we, 
we've all identified what we need, but what do we need now? Not sure. I mean, eight and a half million dollar capital expenditure, that, or, you know, whatever for stations. And surely we can be better than saying we need all this at once because we did it with the county takers. You know, the county pumper takers refurb them, wait them, sit them on schedule so that we're not, you know, we're lessening the impact right now. Sure, but again, circling back, and it's a it's and a question on that, that all of that they. E1 couldn't refurb all nine of them at one time. Well, sure, but that, they, they that only also that's one, one every six months. That's advantageous because then we're not depleting our county of nine resources at one time as well. Right. So. Kevin, I, I think I support your idea on the bond and getting caught back up. I think it's imperative, that especially uh, to get some new stations outside of you don't live inside of Indian Harbor. I don't know. I mean, unless the back gate's open, you can't get through that front gate if you're a volunteer. Yeah. You know, um, it's just you're not going to get there in time. And I think by spreading out the EMS stations is imperative because you guys know how long it takes the EMS to get out to you guys. Even if we put it out by Garcia, that still saves them 10 minutes from where they're currently located in a cardiac situation. I mean, that's that's the whole that's the whole shoot match right there. That 10 minutes. I know still there's additional time to still get there, but that cuts 10 minutes off of it right there. You know, they're coming from over behind Grumps and over here by the high school. That's where they're coming from. So anywhere else in the county, unless they're out driving around, I mean, my gosh. <laughs> Ricky's been looking for property and buildings ever since he's yeah. started. That's a, Let me tell you, it's a long drive to La Pan from Grumps to Three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that takes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and I think that that needs to be part of anything, uh, anything that we look at. Uh, and, you know, and just to throw more things on the table here to discuss, because I think that this is, we need to, we need to get in and look at all our options and discuss things. We've talked about the communication system. Is that, is that something that needs to be a part of this bond? Is to fix our, fix our communications. That's a, these are these are some big asks. This is some. We have some we have some pretty pressing issues out there that we need to resolve. And I think that the, at least in my mind, of kicking this around for quite a bit, going and getting going and getting a lot of it done with a big swipe, the stations and stuff. I, I understand. I have I have hesitancy to put nine tankers on the road at the same time too, because it's. You know, um, on one hand, on the other, they, it does kind of play itself out because some departments will use that, put much more wear and tear on it than other departments will. So it does kind of uh, give you a way naturally to just space those, <coughs> the, the addressing the needs of the future, and that's that's something we're looking for. But I know that uh, pretty much everybody that I talk to. Have talked to. There are times when we need gear. There are times when we need a <clears throat> set of bunker gear. Right now, I've got, you know, a guy that's been coming for, you know, four or five months, showing up to everything, doing the training. We need to get that guy geared up. And, uh, anybody have any thoughts? Well, I'm in a great agreement, 100 percent, with the EMS. I mean. I, I see the numbers all the time because the one over the station they put over by Grumps. Unless I've got crews sitting at the station, I can't get to the Bentwater area before they do. Which that that's the main part of the EMS provide us the help as fast as we can. I mean, I'm in agreement with that 100%. Uh, you know, the tankers, yeah. If we spaced them out, it might be a little better, but we're only asking for money one time if we do it all in one, one lump sum. I mean, well, right. and just well, because, because you get the bond the doesn't bond. mean you have to buy them all at once. No, that's about space them out on the same bond. Space them out in the same bond and not, right. you know. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you a little bit about what Ricky's plans are. He and I have had several discussions while doing COVID crap yeah. in the last month. Um, you know, he, he's looking at putting, trying to find property in a, in a building for a substation 
in the areas where the highest call volumes are. So if you've got a map that's got a little, this little pin map, every time they get a medical call, pin drops. So he's looking at the, the highest volume areas and looking for areas that would put them closer to, to those high response areas. And what he's talking about doing is building a station with two to possibly three bays with sleeping quarters so that if that station is kind of in your area, when it when you have time to expand or you, you're ready to start looking into that area, you can put a truck in that station with them and then have a, a multiple EMS slash fire response from there. That's just kind of what he's been kicking around. So can Texas EMS uh, supply the ambulances and, and retain the personnel to run these additional substations? He said it can. Yep. Of course, it's all about hiring and buying. Uh, it's money too. I mean, yeah, you got to pay people to stay around. You know, I think the onus falls on us too. We, it's our responsibility to help these guys out. So, if we can provide EMTs and paramedics ourselves, and that's something the fire department should be doing. We should be helping on calls. We should be going on calls. We should, you know, <clears throat> a paramedic in this system can do the same thing that a paramedic on the ambulance can. Right. If we have the equipment, we can save just as lives as easily as an ambulance can. Right. So the onus is on us as well. We have to be better at getting out of the house and we have to be better at responding to these calls. We have to figure that out. We're not doing our citizens any justice by relying on Texas EMS if they're not available to be there. Which, which kind of rolls back to our recruitment and retention stuff that we got to figure out. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I think I think more money than the 340000 that was proposed in that $17 million list should go to recruitment, retention, and retirement. That's my personal view. And that's, you know, something that we need to look at and talk about. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, huh? we got to figure out how to get the young ones in that get them off the video game sitting in front of the TV. <coughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. That's a tough chore, Mike. Let me know how that works yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily the young ones. Yeah, it's not the young ones. I went off at 3 o'clock this morning, but I leveled up 15 times. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Dan, I'll go with 6 o'clock. We're having all the 20-year-olds come in. We can't get the older uh, volunteers. What's the, the secret? The, the young ones? Yeah. I have no idea what, why, why we get so much young kids. I mean, half our department is probably under the age of 28 right now, at least, if not more. No, no. Um, but we need those older guys because they're the, I mean, I'll be honest with you, they bring the, the skills in. We got kids that don't know what two cycle and four cycle fuel is. It's, you know, can't tell you how many engines we've got ruined. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if we need those older guys. I don't know what the answer is. I don't have that answer, but you know, we just can't seem to. And I've gone out and approached guys, and all I get is. I'm too busy with my job, I've got kids and sports, I don't like getting up, you know, because I have a job. And that's, you know, that's the answers I get when I'm approached some of these older guys. So, you know, well, and it, it's a fine balance. I mean, if you stop and think about what we ask ourselves and our, the people in our departments to do every day, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a big commitment. Yeah. Is Ricky uh, at Texas EMS willing, is he, you say he's looking at land and buildings. I mean, is he? He's exploring several different options. I mean, he's actually looking financially to invest, but yes. if we go the other route and build these stations, he wouldn't have to do that? Is that what I'm? So if we built substations and left room for an ambulance bay and had sleeping quarters, yeah, he'd probably happily stage or, or man your department with but an he's ambulance. Gonna want ex he's going to want an exclusive contract if he starts putting building slabs down. Yes. And I don't know if he'll get that from the city of Granbury. But he really, he really just needs some kind of an agreement with the county. Okay. Because um, you know he's been operating since he's been here without any kind of wow. sole source agreement. So Carefly could come in and make a bid and sure. start tomorrow. Sure. That's how it's been forever. It, it hasn't been like that forever. Been the ship been but there. so if you think about it from Ricky and Texas EMS's perspective, if he goes out and buys four more ambulances and hires 15 people. And then loses the business. It's basically just yeah, bankrupt. Well, that's a. I mean, that's a question for the county commissioners. Is you know, 
know, how, how soon can something come together? I know Ricky's been talking with with all of them, yep. trying to trying to work something out to, to make that happen. I think it needs to happen. If, if you're gonna if you're gonna expect that out of Texas EMS, you got to give him some some uh, assurance that he's not going anywhere for this amount of time, so that he can expand. Right. It's that's that's hot and heavy in the works. Sure. Yeah, because that's yeah that was a glaring. That's something relatively easy to fix. Absolutely. I think part of what's muddy in the waters it's something with the hospital district and I don't I don't understand all the legality stuff, but there's there's something in all of that mess that's muddied things up a little bit and they're, they're he's trying to work through that now. You know, and I the other elephant in the room is at some point in time paying Paying people is going to be part of this deal. You know, I know Ron has said it said it a few times. I don't know how to how to pay people, some people, and not pay other people and make everybody happy. <laughs> that's a, that is a that's a monumental task, and I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, you know, an inkling of an idea that I've come up with here is with the EMS buildings. You could use those instead of having it be part of a fire department. You could pay firefighters to be with those EMS stations or whatever in a separate in a separate deal. But again, if you've got paid guys showing up to fires, how many of your volunteers just go, man, they got this. They got some paid guys. I I I'm I'm getting out of bed at three o'clock in the morning to go to a call because I know they need me. If there's some people there that I, you know, well, there's a there's a flip side of that is you know you always have people going. Yep. No, no, you're absolutely correct. So, no, that's uh, and I'm uh, you know I'm, I I don't know what the answer is. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. But uh, you know I think collectively as a group we come up with the ideas that you know we can make something work. I think that that's I think that that's I've absolutely seen that with the chiefs all get together with this hey let's sit down and get our needs put together and figure out where we need to go when i've you know seen some clear directions on some of this stuff and some good ideas and that's that's where our strength is is to get these chiefs to get the people on the ground boots on the ground together and say we can do this to make this work yeah. the spring creek down the road here you know they pay their volunteers so stipend I guess they're required to, to uh, work so many sh shifts per month to be on their department and they get paid <coughs> a stipend uh, to be there. I think they only run like a two-man crew or something like that. But 120 to 10. Is it? Okay. Um, and they what actually, was that? 120 for 10 hours. That's okay. all holding your certifications or commission. So okay. you, yeah. okay. part of your county needs to be one will hold all your commission certifications. ESDs over there, I think, work differently. And I, I think maybe the Alito station over there, I think they keep guys there probably full time, don't they? It's full time, but it's station 34, 37, 46, yeah. and 54, 48. ESD 1 has seven full time stations. Okay. Yeah, that's a big that's a big ESD over there. I know there's still a lot of volunteers. Well. And they, yeah, they still have volunteers, they still have part time people. The, the, Everybody knows my stance. The answer is in front of us. We just have to do it. And we've looked at trying to budget ours to keep up maybe two guys at our station at all times. It's we have so many young kids that they're up there sometimes at two or three o'clock in the morning, and then our older guys are up and around at seven. So there's only sometimes a three or four hour window that there's not somebody usually up at the station at some point. So we we've, we've kind of drawed that for right now, but we've actually kicked that one around so Well that, uh, you know, and that's going to have to be, that's not going to be part of a bond package. No. Uh, that's going to have to be something that, uh, you know, the idea is going to have to, we're going to have to, you know, flesh it out and figure out what to do with that, what can be done, how to do it. Um, Throw the, <laughs> throw the 
things out on the table, I think we need to look at some sort of grant writer. I think that that's something that we've all uh, other other groups have talked about and that kind of thing. And I think that, that could help not only the fire departments with road ops and everything else, but I think that that it is going to have to be part of our emergency emergency services also. So, you know. I guess in in summary, what I'd like to see is what uh, what stations do we need to get to get out there? Uh, include the EMS stations, you know, Indian Harbor, Dave Cordova, Toller substation. Include these things. Put these put this package together as something that, uh, that we can get voter approval. the year-to-year -year needs in, in subsidies to the fire departments. So I have a question about, you, Ricky, you should be able to answer this, maybe you don't know. So we had an ambulance station that our fire station for a year and a half. It was great. People still respond to the loans so on and so forth. So with building these substations and hiring more people and providing an ambulance, so will that ambulance stay solely in that station for that area? No. It's, it's, it'd be similar to what you're doing now. The nearest ambulance will respond. So, I mean, yeah, are there still times when we may get to level zero? Uh, yeah. So uh, I don't think, I don't think it's a realistic in any system to expect that to never, to never happen. You have a big wreck up on, uh, you know, 377 right. and you're pulling every resource you've got from this county and half, half the park. Brian, how familiar are you with that setup that, that used to be at your station with next to the event? So, well, I was a ship captain there who couldn't stay at Station 1 for whatever reason. So we offered them a, a place to stay uh, for the top interim meeting. So they had to secure the old Station 1 and a half over there off 377. Right. So we let them stay there and it ended up getting burned. And he paid us, I want to say, $1,200 a month for rent and utilities and all that kind of stuff. And then that was, that was just it right there. We let them use our upstairs sleeping quarters, kitchen, bath, all that kind of stuff. So when Ricky came in, he said the reason he stopped that is he was paying y'all more in rent to be there overnight than he was for all of, all of the building over commercial. Mm -hmm. So that that's so one thing we learned we talked about doing that didn't come to fruition for whatever reason was taking that rent money and burn was going to supply us with enough money to have two people stay there overnight with the EMS crews from the engine and support all time. Right. But that was why it was, it was so high than everybody else, but that plan never got to go. So that's if, why it was if so you're interested in doing that, you might talk to Ricky again and sure. see. Yeah. I, I just know that he like I think the original offer was they were gonna pay two guys mm -hmm. to to man that ambulance. But well, they, they would have to be able to run medicals regardless of what was going on. Well the the agreement was gonna be the the money would go to have two firemen who have EMS certification right. to be able to run an engine with the ambulance whenever it would go. So they weren't paying two people to run the ambulance. They, they were paying paid for two people to be on the fire truck with the ambulance to support the ambulance. Okay. Now, like I, said, I don't know all the inner workings of whatever that deal was, but it, I know he just said it didn't make sense whenever he. That's was why there. it was so high. That's why I, I left Texas EMS like two months after, before Ricky took over. So, I don't really know Ricky that well, but I'm glad we talked to him so he's been clear to come out. Well, in, in what I have talked to Ricky, Ricky's pretty open for whatever. I mean, he's he's willing to work with whatever, whoever, however we can make it work. So, if there's something that we can, you know, go back and renegotiate, uh, you know, with Ricky and figure out how to get Again, it's definitive care. It's getting that cardiac patient to the cath lab faster. Well, that's that's the answer. Answer. Yeah, that's a, that's a hospital issue as well. That's not just a... You know, no, that's what I'm saying. And, and EMS being closer, the transport agency being closer, gets them to the hospital faster. And, uh, <coughs> Anything else? Yeah, I had a question. So, anyway, I'd like to get some good hard numbers on 
stations and needs? And well, one, one of the things we, uh, me and Ron were talking, and if the commissioner's judge have have one person that does uh, the buildings, can give estimates or whatever, it would be better to have one person do all of it, everybody's, than everybody getting six different contractors that are going to throw so many different bids out there that it's going to look terrible. Uh, yes, the 850000 for mine, I can build a whole new station for under that. Not, uh, have you looked at building costs lately? Yeah. <laughs> Materials aren't cheap right now. No, they're they're not cheap. Almost, yeah, I, I bought a two by four for eight eight dollars yesterday. I mean, normally they're three. So yeah, I know building costs are up there, but uh, I still think I can get a new <coughs> station for under that. All I'm asking for is to remodel, to add on. I already got the concrete. I just need the metal. So. I think Kevin, I'm sorry I was late. My neighbor had a heart attack, so I was a little Not excuses. <laughs> excuses. Uh, he's okay. Uh, <laughs> just a heart attack. So yeah, I was bad. <coughs> If we we're talking about this, can all the fire chiefs get together and look at, like the tanker issue, for instance? I know that there's a couple of places that really need Toler or Lipan that need the tankers really badly, where some of you may not need tankers. Do you think that y'all could get together and kind of come up with a plan that would encompass, you know, the priorities? really what you need right now so that you would have everything to be built out in what two years or something. I don't want to carry anything out. I think every fire department here needs something right now. Do you think it, it's got to start with you chiefs at being able to tell us just really what do you need right now right quick? Is it building and getting some space for what you do have? Is it 
getting a tanker where you need it? Is it? Uh, well, Judge, I, I think the tankers and the, the building is going to go hand in hand because. You know, okay. Right now, if, if they if, if I would drove up with a tanker at most stations, there's then there's no place that would have a place to park it. Yeah. yeah. I, I say like North North Hood County, uh, we could use the tanker, and I got a place to park. All I'm gonna do is pull my old tanker out that I can't see spending the money on. You told me about that. And That's send it to flat metal out. or you know sell it for parts or something. But uh, I don't know if any everybody can do the same thing. I know Indian Harbor would need a shoehorn to get a motorcycle in the bay. <laughs> I know I can speak for them for sure. Um, I think Station 70 could probably take one and yeah. have room. Yep. Taller, you guys have a spot? No? Oh, yeah. So in De Cordova, you guys are full up? Yep. We have one spot. Yeah, are you speaking for a lot, man? Yeah, I'm speaking. So, I mean, most of them will, if we show up with a tanker, they're going to make something work. But. Well, Jeff, also on those tankers, I mean, if you ordered them right now, it's still going to be a year ish, six yeah. months to a year before you even see two of them. Right. You know, so. You walked in with your spec right now. It's not like they can build nine tankers all at once and send them out. <coughs> Right. <clears throat> yeah, you're probably we years we can do that for you, Bill, <laughs> if you want to, but I think we were trying to, with the stuff we already gave you, we kind of tried to funnel it down that way. And That's what I mean. That's a great start. I, I mean, that was a real eye-opener for me to see all of that. I, I like that. that was, well, uh, if Mike's okay with it. Everybody kind of turned their stuff in, sort of in a priority order, and then when we sorted through it as a total group, these were the things that almost everybody had down, and that's why they they popped up there. A lot of departments had a few other things, but and and I think you know we talked like like Han and Crescent are not saying. My, my goodness, I need a tanker right today. But we are saying that what we got, we don't know five years from now, we wouldn't be on your doorstep. And it's a, to me, that's a little more of a financial engineering decision. If you go the bond route with low interest rates and your volume discounts for getting more tankers, do you pre-invest in some of these departments or not, as opposed to an actual have to have thing, but you know, and I think we were up front with you when we presented that, that at least those two departments said they know Granberry's county owned tanker is running and everything, but you know, it's in the same, it's the same as the pumper tankers on the, on, on the age deal. So, uh, we, but we'll do whatever you want us to do, but I, I think you're going to find that the building business and the tanker stuff is going to interlock so much and all that both of those are, you're, you're going to be kind of wiggling around the edges. But, but look, I'm not trying to force it too big, but we'll, we'll do it for you. Well, I'm kind of like Commissioner Andrews there. I'd kind of really like to explore the possibility of a bond because it does put everything to the voter and let the voter really decide. Number two, I think fire departments are behind. They really need a bunch of <coughs> equipment, a bunch of places. I mean, I really want to do that. We really want to look at the subsidy. You know, I've kind of been, you know, there's nine different volunteer fire departments and we've always, at the commissioner's court, always tried to keep everything kind of same for every fire department so that nobody could say we were picking favorites. 
maybe not not the best way to do it. If population calls, uh, maybe it's proportionate to population. I mean, I don't know. Is it? Well, I'm not you. picking on people. Let's say, like, I'm picking on you. Yep. Let's say Lipan versus Descartes-Ovid. You know how many people are being served? So maybe. Descartes would mean more for subsidy than my pan, but do it according to the number of citizens. I mean, well, I, I want to be fair to everybody in the county. Given, you know, given Preston's horrible situation of going to five different funding deals, uh, let me tell you how I've had to end up addressing kind of the question of is somebody trying to cover somebody else and everything. And it's not a perfect solution, and it's a little complicated, but it certainly is directionally correct. Uh, whenever uh, in Texas, uh, or with FEMA, a fire department goes on a deployment, FEMA provides a schedule, and it includes, some, like, the volunteers to equip them and and train them at all, it puts in a number of $14 an hour. And it puts in, for different trucks, an hourly rate schedule for that. And I, we, Crescent, get every call that we run, I can price it out as if it was a mini deployment on these, on this equation that has been blessed and is used both by FEMA and by the state for fitness. And so then what you can do is like, for instance, when we run a medical call, like what I just came off of, that costs us a fifth of what it costs if I go to a house fire, <laughs> because we're not running the big trucks and we're not out there so long and all like that. And uh, I've watched this in lots of other jurisdictions trying to estimate how much. You can't do it just by the number of calls because, like I say, some calls are not expensive calls and some calls are extremely expensive calls. So what I do, what we do, is we'll run those stats that way and then kind of look at here's the total what it's costing is Parker County kicking in approximately their part, and yes, and, and if they're not, I go to that agency and say, you know, you're falling a little bit behind here. You're asking someone else to subsidize you. Now, it's a little bit complicated, but we got the little computer program, and every time we come back from a call, when we enter our, uh, it, it can spit that out. Uh, the, the population served is certainly indicative, uh, but usually the reason that is is the population translates into more medical costs. Uh, your property tax base is indicative because that sometimes translates into your property value that you're trying to protect, but not necessarily the number of fires that you get. So after struggling with that for quite a number of years with someone like us that's having to look at different funding agencies, that's what we're using today, and I, it, it works out pretty good. Like, for instance, Hood County, I can tell you, Hood County accounts for about 30% of the cost of running Crescent Fire Department. That's what I, that's, that's the direction that I'm heading, where uh, in De Cordova, what percentage of, uh, you think comes from uh, the rest of Hood County as opposed to just being right there in De Cordova. Do y'all do any kind of analysis like Chief Becker is talking about? We don't about? go to several of the counties like Preston does. We just respond to the day to the area. We go to the way to other departments in the county, but we don't have the involvement that one has funding. <coughs> I think it's wise, Judge, like you said, when we turned in our proposal, a $100,000 stipend across the board sounds great. 
But what we did was we doubled, almost doubled my fans, and we almost doubled Station 70s, and then we had a couple departments that we didn't even meet their operating costs. So it may be more advantageous to look at what it costs to operate instead of being equal across the board. Our call volume is 60% um, of our calls are within the city limits and 40% of our calls are outside the city limits uh, into the county. <coughs> Anybody here just, uh, I know Kevin and I, we, in passing and in talking, we've talked about the uh, possibility of a bond issue. We came because of the state laws about open records, and open meetings, and stuff like that, have a consensus among us, but an idea about the bond. Is anybody just conceptually opposed to a bond issue to see if that will really would work. I think the bond fixes the short term but doesn't go back to the main issue of securing long term funding. The bond issue is great for the capital expenditures we need right now but doesn't for taking into consideration anything 10, 20 years down the road. I think it's not, I don't know that it's necessarily we go for a bond, we spend the money, we go back to the citizens for another bond. Are we going to do that every five, ten years? Are we just going to keep yo yoing back to the citizens and say, hey, well, now we need this, now we need this, now we need this. It still doesn't, it, it doesn't answer the long-term funding solution issue, which is something that all this is about, in my opinion. How, how are we going to fund ourselves in, in 20 years from now? Does everybody have a comment to that? I don't know if anybody can probably look that far into the future, but as far as some sort of subsidy or whatever, I would like to think that that bond could address that to get us down the road five or ten years. I would think that would be something like what you said, the cost of operation in, in that bond, in that bond along with the capital projects. I 100% I agree with you, Judge, and I, I, would, I would say that it is probably the best answer for a short-term fix. But a long-term fix is something that we have to take into consideration because, as you can see here, Judge, by the call volume, we're not getting any slower. So it's going to keep costing more and more and more and more to operate. And now Kevin, you know, Commissioner Andrews brought it up. You know, at some point, we're going to have to look at paying people to be there. So how does that, how does that play into it? How do we answer that question in 20 years? <coughs> Well, and I think I'll address the elephant in the room is we've identified how we how we'd like to do it. You know, that'll be discussed tomorrow. So there's there's options out there, but I don't know that going back to a bond every five or ten years and asking the citizens, well, we need this this time and now, you know, hey, get ready for five years down the road because we're going to need this. I don't know that I, I don't know that that's fiscally responsible. Well, <clears throat> if I could add a comment to that is that that solution is a tax that you're going to the entity and ESD will be looking at every year mm -hmm. raising taxes possibly and so uh, on their own their own taxing entity so they're this is all about money right this whole thing is about money yeah. and it's just a matter of how the means to get to the end I think we all want the same we all want to get to the same end but it's a matter of how we get there. And so, I don't know if we can, I, I, talking about 20 years ahead is, that's so far out into speculation that, you know, I think that uh, when you're looking at equipment, some equipment that lasts 10, 15, 20 years, a short-term fix, as you call it, is, is certainly a place to start as a potential. My two cents, and it's worth every penny of it. So, uh, again, we, we're agreeing that the, the short term fix is, is the bond, but the long term fix, what we've been by is ESD. You know, one doesn't go up every year, it sets a certain rate. It can, it, can, it can fluctuate year to year from one to ten cents, but the max it's ever going to be is ten cents. So, you know, the board is going to set it this year at five cents, and then next year it's at seven cents. So, it, it, you don't
don't have to go back to the citizens every five or ten years and say, well, we're going to raise taxes this go around for this much money. It's a, it's a, it's a one-time deal. But as appraisals go up, that tax goes up, though. Right. Yeah. That's that's what 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 so. Yeah. Well, the ESV is first about the same Senate Bill 2 that you guys have heard with. So uh, they, they, the ESV board, any ESV boards have to operate within those same fences. <clears throat> well, I'm just seeing it as two separate things, Wade, what I hear. I'm no expert, but it sounds like we have a capital need and we have an ongoing operations need. Right. And, and we're trying, sometimes we're trying to put that together. That's right. And that's making it difficult. Right. Uh, I can totally understand the capital need. Each fire department needs different things. And we have in the past, from what I know, we've kind of equalized that among all fire departments. We give each one a pumper tucker and, I don't know, a brush truck, whatever we get. We try to be equal even though the fire departments aren't equal. But now I'm hearing that that's not necessarily the right thing to do. I think I'm hearing that, that, that we need to look at population, each unit. At the same time, separating the capital expenditures if we did do a bond, and, and we just you do that for capital, get you up to speed, that takes some of the pressure off of our budget so we can support potentially higher subsidies. That's kind of what I'm hearing from you guys. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, is, it, is that the 20-year answer? Boy, I'm with you, Dave. I don't know if that's 20 years, but, but we do have an immediate we have an immediate uh, issue right now that we need to get to do what I've seen in your fire department and uh, even Grand Marion and talking to Ron and what their needs are. They're all different. Uh, you know, he needs to vote, and you don't. Uh, but just as an example, well, what are your capital needs, uh, including the buildings? Not everybody needs a building. Uh, I'm a little bit unique in my position, and I hate to keep airing it out, but got 7,000 voters in Pecan Plantation that sees this thing a whole lot different than the county supporting all these other departments. And it's something that I've got to really be able to explain to 70,000 voters that equity, I guess. I guess that's what I'm saying. And I'm not blaming you guys for it. It's just something that, that I have to understand and, and how I deal with, uh, with, with some of the voters in my precinct. The other day, just an oddity. We were cleaning out some stuff and I showed it to the judge. Someone had, an old, had kept an old clipping from the mid-90s from the Hood County News and the headline was about fire departments complaining about the inequities about <laughs> this one getting this and this one getting this. <laughs> so, uh, and it was obvious that at that point in time the way things were approached were as I recall the article, Granberry, the county was buying Granberry a new fire truck and Dave Perdova was saying words ours. That was August <laughs> in nineteen nineties. So uh, I just reading between the lines, I think what happened was over the years this concept of kind of equalizing was thought to have some merit, especially when you consider on the big incidents different departments are coming to support and all like that. And I will say that it, it has taken a little bit, as I compare it to my other places, uh, the Hood County departments work together better than the other areas do. And I, I suspect a component of that has always been that everybody had the same pumper tanker, a little bit of the equalization. But I certainly understand the concept too that if you know if Crescent only ran five calls in Hood County, Crescent doesn't need the same as what Granberry does. And where that happy median is, I don't know. But it's obviously a nut that's been there for a long time. <laughs> that old newspaper clipping was was accurate. Uh, I, I, you probably got a. I guess the right answer may be a kind of a blended deal. If you kind of have a baseline subsidy that is <coughs> make sure that there's a minimum amount that each department can do, and then fluctuate perhaps with the call volume above it. But we're not trying to create a monstrous accounting nightmare either. You know, when I throw out the way I do my 
my point of view, yeah, I could, or my guys wrote this big computer program, so I just enter it in and it spits out. But I'll tell you, if I didn't have that, it's monstrous to calculate all that. But uh, I, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying that I, there's two sides to that kind of equalization coin, I would argue. And probably the right way, if there's two sides, is to kind of honor both sides a little bit, probably. <clears throat> Does anybody have anything else they'd like to contribute? I'm really glad that we had this this meeting. It brings it out. And does it? Yes, sir. I'd like to roll back onto the communications thing that was brought up earlier because I don't know exactly where we're even at right now with it. To be honest, <laughs> in terms of the seven hundred. Yeah. 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 Distributed the first that first week, we had people that were responding on both the old system and the new system, yeah. and it was creating a lot of issues for, for people on scene. That the whoever got there and called command was on the old system. Everyone's responding on the new system. He sees a fire developing, he's calling for more people, more people, more people, tone out more departments because he never heard the rest of them responding on 700 and then come to find out they had they already had like three apartments in route so in order to, to stop that confusion we went back to the old system until we could develop an operating plan the first operating plan that was presented that was uh, John and I don't know who all was on the board came up with some deal about this part of the county being on this channel and this part of the county being on this channel and the, the, the Proposal just didn't sound feasible. So we told them to go back and figure out some way that we can all get on the same channel. And then the other part of this too is Ricky doesn't have any 700s in any of the ambulances that I know of. So whatever we do, if we switch completely to 700, we're leaving him on an island. And I can tell you from, from being at the fire marshal's office for 12 years, when, when Granbury PD went to their 700 system and none of us had 700 in the SO or the fire marshal or anything, we could no longer communicate with them. They could be in a fight with somebody at a gas station and we'll drive right by them because we never hear that. So the SO finally got on the 700 and now Granbury PD is looking at going to a 700 trunk. So we finally got a boat to their island and now they're moving islands. So there is some, some discussion on the law side about moving over to the 700 trunk but again, it's all money and infrastructure and building and all that. But I think at some point, we as a fire side is also going to end up on 700 Trump. But that's future stuff. For right now, until we can develop a plan that we can all be on the same channel or same channels, then that's why they haven't been put in, into service yet. I thought we did that, and we were just waiting to reprogram the, the handhelds to each. So each station would have their own. Yeah, and I, it's been a minute since I talked to John to ask him where we're at on that. Um, I know he said something about getting everything reprogrammed, but I, I don't know what the timeline looks like on that. Because I, I was in on that meeting, um, and I think uh, Polar was going to buy the software to reprogram the handhelds right. so that we could start using those. Right. and. And we were just still going to have to use the VHF cord to talk to Ricky's guys. Well, and that, so I've even talked to a couple of the departments. We were going to give them some 700 portables. And I think, enough yeah. Enough to I put think, in each one of the ambulances until, yeah. until they can get a mobile in their, right. their vehicles. But no timeline on Ricky getting his mobiles? For mobiles? Yeah. Well, again, that's <laughs> money. What we spent, $8,000 per vehicle on a mobile? You know, that, that's, that's one of those capital expenses that he's kind of nervous about making until he knows that he's going to have a job tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know if there's money apportioned or budgeted every year for additional handhelds, but I'd like to see more handhelds. We got 13, I think, and I mean, I have 20 apparatus and 50 firefighters. So, you know, I don't know if that's 
something that's budgeted or if that's something that's a bond type thing that rolled in for everyone. Well, see, that, that wasn't even anything that was put on this, this list. I know, I know, but I know, but Kevin brought it up that should we talk about the health? See, I say that is as one of my uh, equipment expenses through the subsidy, so. Yeah. Well, that's what we'll have to do with ours, too. I mean, but if there's this, you know, we're kicking the, the bond issue around, I mean, there's, you roll a $100,000 into an $8 million bond, it's not that, it doesn't move the needle that much. That's been our issue. I know they equitably, I think you, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff, I think everyone kind of got the same amount of handhelds. Is that they did. Right? So, I mean, we've got this department that's this big, and we got the same amount of handhelds as the department that's this big, and so that's that's caused us, you know, we're not using them yet, but I can see it being an issue. You get a handheld, whatever jumps in, whatever it's going to respond, you can everyone. We have one, you know, that we're going to be able to put in each apparatus, and the officer's going to be able to have it, and that's it. So. Judge, I think, one thing we sort of need from you guys is all these building cost estimates. What what do you want us to do? We, you know, we're, at our last chief's meeting, what we tried to do, and I know it's been going on because Commissioner Cotton is saying some of it, I don't know about all of them, you know, we are, have been trying to get the commissioner for our respect that whose station those fly in to at least kind of see what we're talking about. And if you want each of us to go and try to get some cost estimates about those things so that at least you can look at them in bracket, we'll do it for you. But I think it'd be wiser, like I said, if, if, if you guys wanted to, if there's someone that you wanted to use so that we don't have. Well, I got a question. Is there anybody that anybody would agree on that could do this and be fair with all of them. Do y'all have anybody in mind? I, I really don't. That's yeah. why I'm asking. And Does anybody uh, else here of the deal? Would you that could go around to the various fire stations and look at the space and look at the requirement? I, I looked at Crescent and saw what it was there and kind of have an idea, but I'm not a builder or a contractor. So I, say, I don't think we've got any contractors on the court, do we? we no, we I, I, somebody I don't think. a contractor that does that kind of thing. I mean, no, 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 can't bid on the project. I, I would agree with there, that because he's going to want compensated. Yeah. As a, as a, I'm a commercial general contractor, and as a, I, I don't need any practice bidding. I've done it for 30 years. So if I'm going to go around and bid all this and not be able to do the project, yeah, I don't want compensated. No, that's what I'm saying. That's not fair either. Yeah. And then yeah, we don't want him to get an advantage <laughs> over anybody else. It'd be nice if we had a consultant in the county. You know, that right. was really uh, something. I wonder about hiring a uh, consultant to do it. Is that so? I, I know yeah. what happened with, and where I'm coming really from on that was I was on the group that tried to help with our Lido school yeah. on that. And, and one of, you know, they had one and they had another one that it, it didn't it pass. And then some finally it passed. And one of the big reasons why it didn't pass was a lot of complaints of the one before it, that the one that priced the thing was also the bidder that got it and that the construction costs were artificially inflated. And having just seen that happen right across the line from you, I, I guess I just bring that lesson that I observed over there for y'all's con consideration. And, and he's right, you know, they had to pay somebody to, mm -hmm kind of piece together their estimates and everything, but it it helped them a lot when they went to sell them this to be saying Yeah, that's that's what it looks like to me. That's the fairest thing is that somebody that's doing it that doesn't have a dog in the hunt, he just going up there and looking at it and saying what's the best 
you know, for the county and the fire departments, and then, I don't know, putting the various things out for bid, because you don't want one guy trying to bid all of them or do it. I, so just let him work with, sort of like hiring an architect when you build a house and a general contractor. Well, so I like to sit in on those meetings and watch my architect and my general contractor go at it, and then the owner gets to make the decision, which in this case is the commissioner's board. Yes. You know? So. Judge, something Glenn and I were just talking about is, you know, for projects this size, for, you know, we're, we're talking, the WAG that we put out there was $8.6 million in construction and remodels. So something at that price, I'm saying that it'd almost be better to get like a construction management company. But the whole thing about it is, you hire a construction management company, it's going to cost money on top of this to get the assessments and figure out what it's going to cost. Yeah, that's a pretty substantial amount of construction. Uh, even just to get cost estimates, you know, it's going to take, it's going to take some money just to get that put together. But in the long run, if you've got somebody watching the money too like that and make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to, sort of like these time draws, you know, yes. are you building it the right way according to everything and everybody's keeping track of the money so nobody is doing shoddy buildings, you're keeping up to standards on everything, you're making sure that it's done according to the bid. I don't know, sometimes in the long run, it's it's cheaper. It's A lot of times you don't need an architect, you can draw it out on a napkin too and mm -hmm. save the architectural costs. And, but then a lot of times when the general gets up there, you, you're going to be thankful if you do have an architect that can look at it too. So. I'm, I'm just both. trying to tell you what I just saw here over the last two or three years in my school district across the line. And I I would hate for I'd hate for us to get in the same shape that the real did when there's they couldn't pass a bond issue when they were, were bursting at the seams because of this sort of problem on the one and the four is all I'm trying to flag. Yeah, what if it fails, right? Put a bond dispute out there and it fails. If it fails, then I think what all of us have to do, and, and when I say all of us, fire chiefs for sure, we got to come back and say it's obvious that the public either thinks they're satisfied at the level that they're getting now and in the future, or we got to prove to them that, that they were wrong. And uh, that's part of, part of the risk that you always have when you go to voters. Be my response. Well, I think everybody in this room knows that there's need for improvement, right? I mean, we all agree with that, right? And there is a great need here that we have to be brought up. I mean, I, I see it. I really understand that. I hate it because I hate to have to spend the money, but then there's such a thing as safety, too. I mean, these are first responders that are running into fires. I mean, I think not only myself, but this whole court has always been very oriented for first responders getting the best equipment that they can get. Like, Chief, you and I were talking about like these air packs. That was never even a discussion. I mean, everybody wanted to get those air packs. I mean, I went, what? We're asking people to run into a fire without proper breathing? I mean, that didn't even close. And I think I confess to y'all, we. We all jumped on that horse so fast, all our vows kind of flew over. We were kind of dumbfounded. <laughs> well, that. Kind of, kind yeah. Of well, we're not going to, I mean, I have the greatest respect for all the firefighters, you know, just like I do for sheriffs and police and any kind of first responders. I mean, y'all got, y'all put it out on the line, and all our citizens have got to know, and we have been getting a really good bargain for the quality of firefighters that we've had here in this community, I think everybody agrees with that too. I mean, for the cost versus the quality of firefighters, and it's time that we just lagging behind. It's time to catch up, and we've got to do something. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. We've got to do something. So what is our next step? Is our next step to try to get a consultant to avoid what happened in Olito? to prevent that? I mean, if, 
We're going to do it. Let's do it to prevail on this bond deal. I, I'm only one guy sitting back here in the corner, <laughs> and I know I talk more than I should. But I think you should. I I watched the hot fingers on the Leo thing, and I think it's going to behoove all of us when it, if you guys decide to put this on the ballot for us to be able to say that these were sort of independently cranked up numbers, that it wasn't Mike Bell's brother-in-law that cranked up his numbers and stuff like that, and and be able to make the voters <coughs> believe that if on this construction chunk of it, that if they approve it, that it's going to be very well managed. And, and that's that's I, I think that's kind of important having been seen it got burned on the other side. But that's my advice to you. And Glenn Tillman, you're just the guy to work with Jeff Young sitting right there, Mike Self behind you to try to see what is available with the consultant management type of deal mm -hmm. to see what we need and try to get back with us as soon as you possibly can to see what is available and let us have a maybe another workshop about what they do have in the form of getting a consultant management to start this process. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that should be the next step. Does anybody disagree with that to see about so we can, because everybody needs something about the building here, you know, uh, I would assume. So, I agree with do, you. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, some, as a, Speaking as a commercial general contractor, I wouldn't do this for free. You know? Well, that's right. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, it's, a lot of work. It's not, you know, four And then it's a follow through, too, that making sure that once after you choose somebody, that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Glenn, can you do that? Yes, Start, sir. You know? So mm -hmm. I think that's the next legitimate. Are you trying to say you sneak in? Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's do that. And uh, can you fire chiefs get together and maybe refine what you did, chief, on that list of what we did? Like some of y'all, you know, all had, a lot of, like you said, a lot of similarities. But let's see what we can get together to really put together something, and also include in there the subsidies. Okay, also, could y'all kind of work together on that, that some stations may need more than others? And I don't mind, I've always been under the equity deal, but now that I get into it, I can see that sometimes equity is not the fair thing to do. So, I just want, I want to be fair with everybody. Let's get everybody that's in the county to do the right thing. I want to help all the firefighters too. I, I mean, I really am. And, I know that Nate Cordova is looking back there for retention, for getting them, and, and having some sort of a pension plan on the deal. You know, we can kind of look at that, too. I, I don't mind looking at everything. They're just trying to see if that's kind of the way of the future, to, to have some sort of a pension plan, maybe across the board on the deal as a as a way of keeping people, getting people and retaining, retaining firefighters. <coughs> I'd like for, Glenn, you start on that, and if the Chiefs could all get together and let's have something about it in another two weeks. I mean, I'd like to get moving on it, really. And then, does everybody agree with that? Well, yeah, we got a budget coming up. We need, yeah. to, we need I, to know where we stand. Yeah. So, what I can do, Judge, if it's, and Mike's our president, is, you know, we kind of started this with each department putting down what they thought their needs were. And uh, we, we worked to try to see where there was some uniformity across there and all like that, and did that. And it's, uh, if you want me to, I can send out the, all the chiefs again, you know, what they turned in, and we've got these items that are on the table plus the ones they turned in, and we, <coughs> we just give you a matrix that says every department here's their one, two, three, four, five, uh, and if, if you want us to, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Hey, Ron, yeah.
something Lynn and I were just talking about. If, if everybody, I think everybody's represented here except for Con. Uh, if everybody in here can shoot together just a rough estimate, what you're looking for is it a building? Is it a remodel? Estimated square footage. Um, so would the building include land as well? Well, obviously, you'd have to have land to put it on. <coughs> Make sure it's all. <coughs> well, I think I'd, yeah. I'd leave that as a separate, note that separately okay. and say, yeah, the land is, the land will cost this much, the construction will cost that much. I talked to Dr. Glenn the other day, and he said, hey, Grand Mary ISD's got some land here and there, and uh, they're willing to work with us if we can find something that's in the right spot and work. So, so, so I guess when you're shooting, when you're putting together those emails, put together what kind of station you're looking for, square footage and whatever, uh, an estimate of the square footage that you're going to require, and then maybe note on there and land that still needs to be acquired or whatever. Yeah, that'll, that'll help give me a good place to uh, start. <clears throat> okay, anybody got anything else? If not, let's go ahead and adjourn this meeting. We've got some heavy assignments out there. All right.